Hello, Cardinal fans, and welcome to the UIW Coaches Show. I'm your host, Carla Bello. The UIW football team dominated the visiting sixth rank Magnus Cowboys on Saturday by the score of 45 to 17. Wide receiver Philip Baptiste caught two touchdowns, and the Cardinals' defense held Magnus to 222 yards of total offense while forcing four turnovers. UIW improves to 4-1 in conference play and holds a three-way tie for first place with McNeese and Central Arkansas. Over in volleyball, the Cardinals secured a 3-1 road victory over McNeese on Tuesday. After dropping the first set, UIW rallied to win the match, claiming the final three sets by the scores of 25-23, 25-21, and 25-20. The UIW men's soccer team claimed a senior day victory this past Sunday when they defeated Call State Bakersfield by the score of 3-1. Luis Garza, Jonathan Diaz, and Darius Feldman each score for the Cardinals. In women's soccer, UIW shut out Sam Houston State on the road by the score of 3-0. The Cardinals were led by two scores from Sabrina Martin O and from Sam Badley. The men's and women's cross-country teams continue to prepare for the Southland Conference Championships, which take place this Friday. Cardinal fans, stay tuned. We will have our UIW Falk coaches on the show coming up next. A graduate from Angelo State University, and for the very first time, we have our offense coordinator, Cody Krill. Hello, Coach. How are you doing? Good. Today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Really good. Coach, you guys just knocked off the number six ranked team in the nation. How do you feel about the big win at home against McNeese? Uh, we were very excited. They were a very, very good team. Uh, had uh, probably one of the better defenses in our, our conference, and... Uh, it was, a, it, it was a huge win for our team and a huge win for our, our UIW. Yes. As an offense coordinator, what is it like to be part of this high-paced offense? Uh, it, it, it's really fun. It's exciting. Uh, we, uh, you know, we, we get to, you know, as, as offense coordinator, we get, to, we get to do a whole bunch of different things. Our team, it, our, our message is always uh, really consistent. Uh, we want to play very fast, obviously. We want to play with great fundamentals, and then we want to be extremely physical uh, and be the most physical team on the, on the field when we play. Coach, what is it like to work with Coach Eric Morris, and what's your approach as a collective staff? Uh, he, he is, uh, Coach Morris is a, is, a, is a great person to work for. Uh, he's very family or, or oriented. And then uh, the, our staff as a whole is a, is a really good staff. We're, we're a young staff. Uh, uh, so and, and we, uh, we we all have some different backgrounds. We have a lot a lot of guys that uh, come from different different areas and different offenses. So we've kind of been able to merge all those things together, and it's helped our offense uh, a whole bunch. Uh, being able to merge different styles and different offenses together, uh, that way we can attack uh, you know we can attack a defense a lot of different ways. How does establishing the running game allows you to do well throwing the football? Uh, it, it helps a whole bunch because what it, what it allows you know what it allows you to do it allows those receivers to get freed up outside, and then de you, basically you're making a defense determine are you going to stop the run or are you going to try to stop the pass you got to load the box uh, to stop the stop the run which that obviously will free up some things for uh, uh, guys on the perimeter uh, to throw them the ball so it's it's huge anytime we're able to uh, you know run the ball we're probably going to win the football game. So. Yes. Um, what's the most challenging thing about preparing for a game? Um, just, uh, just uh, you know, making sure uh, what you're doing is going to be successful, making sure 
uh, getting all the uh, film watched and make, making sure that uh, you, you're, uh, you know, you're covering all your bases and you, know, you're, you, and you have answers for everything that the defense is uh, going to try to throw at you. Are you surprised that the team has had such a great turnaround from last season? And what do you think they need to work on to keep up improving? Uh, not, not extremely uh, surprised. Uh, you know, obviously we didn't really, you know, I don't think anybody, uh, none of our coaches knew that, you know, the, t the, le the talent level of the teams that we were going to play. We knew we had some really good players through this spring, uh, and uh, we knew we recruited some really good players. So we felt confident that we were going to be able to compete with anybody that we uh, played with. And then uh, we just, uh, we just, just to keep this going is we just got to continue every day, uh, and, we, and we preach this, Coach Morris preaches this, is to get one week better and, uh, you know, and just try to continually, continually uh, uh, get better and then just not get tired of the process. It's, it's a long process. They've been doing this since uh, this summer in August, and it's the same thing over and over and just and believe in the process and just keep working every day and get better every day. Who are some student athletes that you feel have made a productive impact in this season? Uh, obviously, John Copeland uh, coming in as a true freshman. He's done a he's done a great job. Uh, uh, we, you know, our offensive line and uh, have, has done a, has a, has done a really really good job of protecting him and, and allowing us to run the ball. Uh, feel like uh, you know we have several receivers. Uh, uh, and uh, Cam Williams, Philip Baptiste, Lamont, Cody Edwards. I mean, so we, we and uh, you know, we have four guys uh, that you know you have to cover all four of them. So it makes it it, it, it makes it hard because any one of those guys are able to go off and uh, have a big game. So it makes it hard on a defense. And then obviously our running backs have done a great job. They've uh, they've uh, with uh, Raekwon and uh, and uh, some of the other younger guys. They've done a good job. So. I mean, we have a bunch of guys that are, you know, contributing and uh, and that are helping us be successful. It's not really just one or two. It's it's a it's you know it's a collective group of guys. Collective. You traveled to Nichols this week. What will be the focus in practice as you prepare for them? Uh, just like we said, you know, to get better, uh, try to get better at everything that we're doing. Uh, Try to get play faster. Try to be better, more uh, uh, have better fundamentals as a, as a as a as a whole group, uh, and then just uh, be able to not allow distractions uh, to to affect us. And uh, you know it's really hard to win on the road in this conference, and and uh, understand that, and be uh, you know be prepared for whatever they have uh, to throw at us. Coach, last question: What will it take to win a Southland Conference Championship? Uh, we're going to have to get, like I said earlier, we're going to have to get better uh, every day and just keep stacking those good days. And uh, if you keep stacking good days and you get better each day, uh, you know, we'll be very, very tough uh, to contend with. Thank you so much, Coach, for being here and good luck on this road game. Thank you. Each summer, student athlete leaders from the Southland Conference's 13 schools get together for a retreat. Before we start another season of competition, there's time to have some fun and bond. We also share experiences of serving our campuses and communities. Together, Southland student athletes completed more than 30,000 community service hours over the past year. We pull for each other and push to make each other better. Just part of what makes us Southland strong. Coming back from a road victory against Magnese State University, we have our women's volleyball head coach, Samantha Dabbs. Coach, it's always so nice to see you. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Good to see you too. Um, coach, how did it feel to go on the road and get the victory? It was really nice. I mean, we've only had one road victory in conference. Um, so for our team, we're still learning on how to build on road wins and how important they are because um, you do kind of have all the elements kind of against you with the traveling and then if things go wrong or any little hiccup yeah. here and there it's, not, it's kind of out of your control um, so it was really nice McNeese was a, uh, is a really good team they're a big team um, and it was really fun to go into their home and beat them on their home court mm -hmm. Bethany Clapp and Julia Monday accounted for 35 of the, four, of, of the 54 kills in this past victory against McNeese how did their performance help the team win? Well, Bethany Clapp, I mean, just she plays all six rotations, and so she's just a solid freshman. I mean, she plays, she doesn't get frazzled. 
teams come after her knowing her that she is a freshman and knowing they can kind of get her tired and winded just because she plays all six rotations and on the outside for us. But the outside is going to get majority of the sets. And she did a great job putting them away when we opened her up. And our setters did a great job running the offense and finding her in um, perfect situations. And Julia Monday, I mean, just her game, she just has such a high ceiling. That kid's just getting better every single day. Um, the momentum that she carries for us whenever we need a big play or a big point, she gets it for us. And she's just such a great athlete that I'm so excited that she's only a sophomore, right? But I, she has so much room to grow. And so the two of them playing the right side and the left side for us is just a huge opportunity for us to spread our offense even that much more to keep the other team kind of on their toes. So the two of them, they did a great job. Our whole team had a great performance, but the two of them did their job with putting the ball away in big situations when we really needed them to. What was the team, uh, team's mentality during the last three sets that helped them stop the Cowgirls? So during the first set, we were back and forth with them, and then they got a nice little four-point kind of spread on us, and we could never catch up. So we knew going into set two, three, and four that you have to be 1-0 going into each set. You know, So that game, our O is 0-0. Zero zero. So going into that next set, we just said new game, new mentality. Don't stop what we're doing on our side, but limit the errors um, that we're having in serve receive because we did let them get a four point spread on us and we could never just catch back up so the mentality was to change our serving pattern a little bit more we kind of served um, a different opponent on that you know on that side and kind of got them more out of system which made our job easier on our side but we also ma made sure that we focused on what we were doing well and kept doing that and not going away from what we were being successful at so they had a great mentality going into sets two three and four UIW had two blocking errors in the fourth set, and he gave the Cowgirls a lead for just a brief moment. Mm -hmm. How did the team respond to this, and what did the team learn from their performance? So I, we also, I mean, we understand with our mentality that this is a game of mistakes. That's how the other team wins, right? Mm -hmm. And so with those two errors and giving them the lead, it was awesome to see that our mentality was next point right we weren't thinking of like oh what did i just do wrong or dwelling on the last point we just knew if we just did our job and cited out and then earned one on top of that we'd be right back in the mix so i think during the timeout we just kind of took it and realized that you know don't have those mental errors and don't try to overplay and that's usually what happens when players have blocking errors or in the net things like that you're trying to overplay and finish the game instead of just taking it one point at a time until you win the game and so we just had to change our mentality of don't overplay don't overthink it just do your job, and I, I loved it because they didn't get frazzled by it. They didn't get phased. They didn't let it affect them and make it more of a lead than two points. They just kind of were like, okay, guys, relax, no more mental errors, and just play your game. And that's exactly what we did, and we finished them off. Mm -hmm. After the victory against McNeese, how does the team plan to carry this momentum into this weekend? So we had a nice weekend off. So we played only Tuesday, and then we were off. You know, we were off for a good nine days, right? So that's really awesome for us, as I gave them off Saturday and Sunday to kind of refresh their minds, their bodies, their legs. You know, of course. And so going into this weekend, um, we play two teams we haven't played yet this year. Um, we've got to perform really well on the road um, at Nichols and um, against UNO, and both teams. You know, they've had some ups and downs, but they're everybody's you know a target right now because we're all trying to fight in for those top eight spots. So. Mm -hmm. The mentality going in this weekend is, you know, get there, try to relax a little bit, stick to the game plan, and just understand that it's one set, one point at a time, and just take care of these road victories, which are so important because then we're back at home the last two weekends before conference, which is a great way for us to finish our, you know, our season, on, you know, our regular season on a good note. So it's kind of in our hands, and we can do it. We just have to make sure we perform and do our job and play level-headed the entire time this weekend. Yes. Congratulations, yes. Coach, again Thank on you. this big victory against Magnus State. After a big win, we have our men's soccer head coach, Chris Fittler, with us. Hello, Coach. How hey, are you doing I'm today? I'm good. How are you? Really good. Coach, your team put on a show for Senior Day versus Cal State Bakersfield. How do you feel 
to get the win at home and send the seniors off right. It's always nice to get a win, but obviously, you know, my message before the game was you don't want to lose on your last home game of the season and to win as a team, for, especially for the seniors, because most of them have been here for a good four or five years. So it was important for them to get the win, especially with the families here as well. Yeah. 11 shots on goal, Garza, Diaz and Feldman each core. Can you talk us through the goals and what was working for the team on Sunday? Um, you know, since we've changed the system of play, I was, I've looked at the stats and everything. We seem to have got a lot more goal production. More pe different people are scoring every week, which is nice. It's, I think the key thing is we're creating more opportunities to score as we were than earlier in the season. Um, and I think we're being a bit more prolific as well, which is nice. Coach, can you walk us through this play? It was the very first goal you guys scored in this game yep. on Sunday. Well, we have Trinidad. He's got a very, very long throw. Um, it's a dangerous weapon that we, we've looked to utilize. Funnily enough, this is the first time we've scored in four years from it. Um, but, you know, we set it up like it's a corner or a free kick. Obviously, crowd the area, make life difficult for the other team. And to be fair to Luis yesterday, that's his first college goal. He timed his jump well, directed his header well and put it where the goalkeeper couldn't get it. But it's a weapon that we look to use and teams are scared of. But unfortunately, that's the first time we've scored in four years from it. So um, it was nice for it to finally pay off yesterday. Um, and fair play to Trinidad and Luis. It worked well yesterday. Your goalie, Carlos Mercado, stepped up with some nice saves in Sunday's game. What do you think about his performance? He did make some very important saves, and to be honest, he owes us a performance after a few weeks ago. Um, but he came up big yesterday and made some important saves that you know ultimately helped us get the win. And what does it take in order to be a successful goalkeeper? Well, I was a goalkeeper myself. I think the biggest thing is a mentality. You're always going to make mistakes. Um, and unfortunately, as a goalkeeper, when you make mistakes, it normally ends up in a goal. And you always get the finger pointed at you. So, you know, you've got to be strong world. You've got to have a different mentality than the other outfield players. But I think the main thing is just, uh, you know, having a positive attitude. And, you know, if you do mess up, you've got to make sure you do the next thing correct and help the team out. And I think he's done that. Three games left for the season, obviously you want to win, but what are you looking to see in your team during this final stretch? Yeah, like you said, obviously to win as many games as possible, but I think the change in style of play, we have to start fine tuning in that um, and you know, work, working on and ironing out the things that we're not so good at right now in there. Um, but ultimately, all I can ask of the guys right now is to play as best as they can. That's all I can ask. Thank you so much, Coach, and congratulations on this big win. Thank you. Coming back from a road victory against Sam Houston State University, we have our lovely women's soccer head coach, Emma Wright Cates. Hello, coach. How are you doing today? I'm good, Carla. How are you doing? Good. Coach, in this past game against Sam Houston State, you had a 1 to 0 lead mm -hmm. going into halftime. How did this early start help the team win? Yeah, I mean, we knew going into the game that we had to give it everything that we had. We had to win to have a lifeline to continue to compete to get into the Southland Conference. Um, and so the lead going into there, the mentality, the momentum, it really helped us to hold on to it for dear life for that second half. Sam so Houston had 22 shots in the game. How did Sydney Hunsinger's outstanding performance help the team secure the victory? Yeah, I mean, Sid played amazing. Um, she came off a line really well, read any through balls, any balls that were tried to be dumped over the top, she read them really well. And I think some of those counted as shots. Um, so the stats are a little bit off, 
but um, she made some big time saves, was very, very brave. Um, she got hit about three times by studs um, and she took the hit and just kept on going. During the second half of the game, the team had the same steady intensity. Why do you think the girls play with this urgency? Yeah, so again, it just goes back to that knowing we had to be all in. We had to give it everything that we had. There was no excuses. The, we don't get another second chance. Like We have to win that game. Um, so the urgency, the energy, it was all there. So that's all they needed to really motivate them. Your team had 16 total shots and three goals during the game against some Houston State. How was the team able to score more effectively? Yeah, just having that calm, cool composure in front of goal. We've had opportunities in other games, um, had multiple chances and we just haven't executed. And today, you know, yesterday, sorry, Sabrina was on and she put away the shots that helped us. She scored two. Sam followed up off Bella's shot that hit the bar and um, put the ball home. It really looks like the student athletes are playing for one another. How was how has the team chemistry developed throughout the season? Yeah, I feel like every game we've got stronger. Um, we've become more resilient. We've had that short term memory that I talked about previously, like whatever the storm has blown at us, we've rode it and we've rode it together. Um, and I think when you go through you know, adversity, it makes you tougher and stronger. And so we're ready and we're prepared for anything ahead. What does the team need to do to make the Southland tournament? Yeah, and right now we're sitting in the eighth spot and so eight teams go. Um, there's four teams competing for that eighth spot. Um, so basically we've got to hang on for dear life. We need to win. If we win, we're in control of our own destiny. So if we win, we're in. If we tie, we're relying on some other results to fall our way. Coach, thank you so much for being mm -hmm. here and good luck on this big game against Abilene Christian University. Brilliant. Thanks, Carla. Appreciate it. Okay. Want to impress your friends at the next UIW tailgating party? Here at NCR, we have plenty of makes and models for every personality, even yours, Red. Do you see anything here that catches your eye? the type of tailgating I had in mind, Red. We're just a few days away from the Southland Conference Championship and joining us we have the women's and men's cross-country track and field head coach, Dr. Derek Riddle. Hello coach, how are you doing Good, today? how are you doing Carla? Good. Um, coach, endurance, determination and persistence are those the three main characteristics of a cross-country student athlete? Yeah, I think you hit it pretty well there. Yeah, endurance, perseverance, and what was the other one? Persistence. Persistence, yeah. You have to have all three of those to, uh, to be a good distance runner, especially at the college level, because they, they have a lot of uh, other mitigating factors. You know, the, the social life, the uh, academic life, which is the most important thing they do here, and, and their faith, and then they have to get out there and train at a high level and do a lot of mileage on a weekly basis to, to be able to be competitive at the Division One level. So, yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head with that. What do you tell your student athletes in the days leading up to a meet? What should they drink? What should they eat? What, what type of rules they have to follow before they compete? Well, we, we pretty much do the same thing we, that we've done throughout the week, that we've done throughout the semester and the, and the year in general. We just tell them continue to stay hydrated. Uh, don't drink too much water because they can, uh, they can overhydrate and lose too many electrolytes. But uh, eat a well-balanced meal, take a multivitamin, uh, high-protein intake to repair the muscle damage that we do during workouts and, and competitions. But, yeah, as long as they're doing the same thing, the week of a competition that they've been doing all season, they're usually going to be uh, pretty good to go. Coach, do you have any specific traditions you do right before the meet? Uh, well, we always have a team meeting the night before uh, when we're on the road, and that, that's a fun time for us to get together and, and really just kind of get a pulse on where every, what everybody's feeling, how everybody's thinking. Uh, so we, we do that. Uh, 
we, we eat a dinner together. We always eat as a team. We don't give meal money. We use, a, use my credit card, go to whatever restaurant we want to and eat, as, eat at a big table together and just have family time is what we call it. Uh, and then the morning of, we eat breakfast together and uh, the, the entire team is dressed the same way. Uh, they warm up at the same time, they warm up together, and then they do a chant at the end uh, you know, before the race goes off. So we try to stay to that schedule. Mm -hmm. The Southland Conference Championships are this week. What have you been doing to help the team prepare both mentally and physically? <clears throat> Well, mentally, we've been talking about the race plan, the strategy, what we, how we want to go out, you know, the, the, uh, the, how we want to feel during the race, you know, pack running, going out aggressively, being under control. Uh, and then physically, you know, we've been tapering a little bit, so, but at the same time, keeping our normal schedule that we've had over the, the first 12 weeks of the season, uh, just doing workouts that are going to give them confidence you know, that they're going to finish that workout and say, hey, I, feel, I, I, I went to the well, you know, I, but I feel good. I feel composed. I feel under control. I feel strong, and I'm confident going into the meet this weekend. And they are. I mean, the, the women run at 8.15 Friday morning in Lake Charles. The men run at 9.15. So we'll have a lot of parents there, some administrators from the athletic department, and uh, they're, they're as confident going into this conference meet as they've ever been at a previous conference meet. So I, 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 like, I like where the team's mentality is and physically they, they look great. Coach, thank you so much for being here today and good luck on the Southland Conference Championship this Friday. Thanks for having me again, Carl. I appreciate it. And we added a new segment to our show. We're okay. going to play rock, paper, scissors, okay? Okay. It's the best, best two, out two out of three. three. Okay, let's go. Okay. Rock, rock, paper, scissors, scissors go. Pa paper, scissors, don't shoot. Rock, paper, scissors. Okay, one. <laughs> rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> rock, paper, scissors. Okay. Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Okay. Oh, mom. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. <laughs> Oops, that was okay. That was paper. All right, okay. Rock, paper, scissors. Oh, 2-0. Oh. <laughs> I lost. Okay, one more, okay. Rock, paper, paper scissors. scissors. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> paper, scissors, don't shoot. Oh. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, good job. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, yeah, he beat me. <laughs> my prediction, my prediction yes. is accurate. <laughs> Finally defeated Carla. Yes. Cardinal fans, stay up to date with UIW Sports this week as football goes on the road to face the Nichols Cardinals this Saturday at 3 p.m. Volleyball heads to Nichols on Thursday at 6.30 p.m. and New Orleans on Saturday at 1 p.m. Men's soccer travels to the West Coast for the road game against San Jose State on Friday at 9 p.m. and Seattle on Sunday at 3 p.m. Women's soccer visits Abilene Christian on Friday at 7 p.m. and Cross Country will participate in the Southland Conference Championship in Lake Charles, Louisiana on Friday as well. For UIW Athletics, I'm Carla Bello. Have a beautiful day.